What's up, guys? It's your boy DK coming out. Oh, no. Is that recording? Hey, guys. It's me, Mr. Keel, your art teacher. Yeah. So I'm coming at you today trying to show you something we can do with our clay. A couple things, actually. One is I'm going to get out some clay. And what I'm going to do with the clay is I'm going to show you a little thing we can make called stamps. Now, stamps can be a fun thing to make just because they're fun to make. They can actually be useful. I've used stamps on some of my work, a way to create a, a design that I can repeat over and over again. And so what I'm gonna do right now is walk you through a little bit of making some stamps. So to do this, let me show you some stamps first of all, and then I'll show you what they can do. So I have some stamps here. I've got this one, looks like a little cactus. We've got a pineapple one. So I got a couple things, uh, peace sign. This one's just a bunch of designs, like letter Z kind of designs. This one is sort of a bunch of lines come to the middle, kind of square sort of things. This one here is uh, my initials, like the signature I normally use, but it's backwards. So when I stamp it, it goes forward. I have a little spiral going on here. Uh, we have a kind of a square spiral, or rectangular, rectangular. Uh, boxy, how's that? I have this lightning bolt, I have a spiral, and we have a little triangle, and I have this one, just a radial symmetry, this goes around, it's the same design all the way around, and we got one here, which is a bunch of lines. So these are all a variety of things, different designs, some look like actual things, some are just shapes, lines, designs. Now let's see what these stamps can do. Now first of all, I'm doing a little thing where I'm just pressing clay down with my hand. Now, if you think about what it is that you're pressing down onto, some of you are pressing down onto your board that's included in there, some of you doing it on some other board or some other surface. Um, the table that I have here, it's a finished table, meaning it's sealed, uh, kind of like a finish is put over it, and that's a lot like the board where it's like a, a very smooth surface and it's hard and there's no pores. And so if you do what I'm doing right now, and you take your clay and you start pressing it down, and you get out your rolling pin and you roll it out, you'll have a bad surprise later on when it's time to get it off because what's happening is it's gonna stick to the table. Now this one, not too bad because I didn't press down very hard. Now if I was gonna do what normally happens with people is you will create something and when it's time to peel it off, it just, it's stuck. And it is on there and besides being annoying, now I have a mess already. So a little trick for you is something disposable that you can put between the hard surface and your clay. In this case, I just have a piece of paper. Um, a lot of artists will use canvas, like a fabric. The problem about canvas is it does absorb a lot of the clay and therefore fills up with clay dust. And so if someone's using canvas and using it kind of recklessly, putting that dust in the air, AKA LeBron, um, they're, they're creating that, that, cautious, that caution that we're trying to stay away from is the danger of the clay dust. So if you put it on a surface that doesn't let it stick to the table, like paper, that should work great. Um, newspaper, any sort of paper. Um, if you did want to do fabric, that's fine. Just make sure that you indeed are aware of the dangers. So if I roll this out, now one thing that happens a lot is this. When you're rolling, using the rolling pin, it will roll up on you like that. And it will keep doing that as long as you Ah, and takes over. It's actually extremely avoidable. What I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it out from the middle, from the middle, and so if you always go away from the middle, it won't stick because it has to go back in order to grab. So if, I, if I'm having trouble with it sticking, all I got to do is roll away from the middle and all is well. Now I got a little bubble in there I'm noticing, but considering what I'm doing right now, it doesn't really matter because I'm just going to show you what these stamps can do. All right, stamps, do your thing. All right, we got this one. It's, that's one with just a bunch of lines, and so it's real simple. It does kind of things like this, which who knows, if I was doing a pattern, I could alternate the pattern. So it's kind of nice. Uh, we also have, what do we got? Because some other geometric kind of designs. And I'm gonna rock it back and forth sometimes. If I put it in there, sometimes I don't get, that one did work out good, but if I give it a little bit of rocking back and forth, maybe even better. This one with little Z's on it, now this is Z's stick out. Um, here's that little spiral that's boxy. I'm not going to try to mess up that word again. All right, we have the pineapple. Ooh, I love the pineapple. Pineapple turns out pretty cool. And so what we have going on here is 
I've I've gone to the trouble of making one of these, so now I can repeat, repeat, repeat. And if I wanted a piece that had pineapples all over it, I could just keep stamping and stamping. Okay, what else do we got? We got a peace sign here. That one I've used on a work of art. You can see here, I use my peace sign stamp for the headband of this guy here. It's a fun little thing. Uh, he's got an open head because it's actually a cell phone amplifier. <laughs> Anyway, a few more of these. We've got a regular spiral. Cactus one's a lot of fun. I really like how the cactus one looks. One of my favorites. Um, it sticks up. The cactus actually sticks up instead of like being pressed in. So it's kind of a cool thing how you can make things stick up. Uh, what do we got here still? Got a few more here. It's a little triangle. It's kind of a rounded triangle, a rounded triangle. We have this one. Circles. It's all the little lines on there. So with this, the cool thing is like, if I want to put a design like that on my clay, it would take forever to do it over and over and over again. But if I could take the time to do it once and then I can repeat it over and over again, that's pretty cool. So we're going to make some stamps here to see how it goes. Now, ideally, I mean, the, the best situation is that they're like this, where they are fired clay, meaning they're hard and permanent. Sure, breakable like a dish. I could drop it and break it. But they're very hard and much more permanent. You're not going to have that option right now because anything we make with clay, we can't fire it just yet. Um, but if you hang on to it and if this is something that survives till you can get it here, uh, we can fire them and make them permanent. But I found last year that you could make these and even before they're fired, if used carefully, they can be used to stamp into soft clay. So we're going to give it a shot. Okay, quick little thing uh, about putting the paper underneath there. It did work really good so it didn't stick, but I left it on there a while and the paper saturated and eventually came loose and then wanted to stick to my clay and then yikes it's just kind of like shredding I got little bits of paper stuck on there so if you do press it down with the paper and roll it out take it off that because the longer it sits on there it just starts to dissolve the paper so good for rolling out but you don't want a bunch of paper stuck to your stuff okay so when we get started here we don't need very much clay for this and again remember if you're using your clay and you get it all out and then you're working with just a small amount of it and it's taking you a while and you're like okay time to clean up and you take your large amount of clay put it back in the bag you realize uh oh seems like my clay got a little bit dried out on me keep it in your bag except for what you actually need and you might not want to go through that annoying process of i was sealing it up or whatever or whatever bag you have like tying it up and up but if you just tuck it under you're in much better shape. So if I do that, if I just make sure it's tipped under, great. That being said, you're probably gonna want more than one bag. And you can use any sort of bag. We can use the ones from the grocery store, any kind of zipper style bag, whatever. Whatever works for you, as long as it doesn't have a hole in it, um, you should be good. So I'm gonna take some clay, and not a large amount. Um, and what I need to do is just the really, really bare basics of I need to have some sort of thing I can hang on to and a flat surface to draw into. And so these are not really pretty looking when I look at how these are. It looks kind of like some tooth of a giant. Uh, they're just really, you know, they're not really nice looking. They're very functional, but I wasn't concerned about the look of them. Now, you certainly could make it look really nice. So here's my initials one. And I do want you to make one of these where we try to make something more decorative. And so it's real simple. It kind of reminds me sort of like the beginning of a chess piece or something like that. So I have um, I have my initials on there. I have some little, I was doing like almost like a flower design. I actually put the initials up at the top. Anyway, so I do want you to do one of those. But before we get into like worrying about that, let's just start making some stamps and experiment. And so just take some clay that you can press down. Now, Pressing down onto flat surfaces isn't a problem. If I'm pressing it really hard and using the roller, that it is. But if I'm going like this, that's not going to really stick there. I mean, it sticks enough that I can do that, but it comes off, okay? So what I want to do is just simply mess around with getting a flat surface by using, in this case, the board. And so now if I say, well, I don't really want it that big, well, then just start doing some squishing. So I'm going to take it and put it on here and just do some smushing, smushing, smushing. I don't know if that's a technical word, but it is what you're doing. And I want to get it, and I could kind of roll it down. Whatever I want to do to get it to more of the size I want. Now, I can also do some trimming off of things. I could use things to kind of cut it off. I could take the, the knife tool or even the popsicle stick. And I can, you know, I could do things where if I said, I actually want it to be more boxy at the end. I don't want it to be a circle. I could just, while it's on the board flat, I could do some of that just to kind of get started. 
it's not the like the most uh, precise tool in the world. Um, and I'm going to challenge you guys to come up with some tools you may find or make that after you start working with clay, you'll start seeing things and you'll be like, ooh, I could use that. And that could be a nice little who knows what. Even like you twist off the top on a bottle and you're like, it has these little lines on there. It's like a cool little pattern. And you try it out someday in your clay to see how it goes. And you're like, ooh, I like that. And you keep it in your bin until you start becoming like you're hoarding it all and you have like 50 things in there and you don't have any room for your clay. And then we have an issue and we should talk. But it is kind of cool to, to see what things you find around that, that can be used. So basically, I just want to do it flat and then decide on the shape you want. So if I said, I'm good with that, I don't like that it has like a little hole right there. And I was just having a hard time getting that to go away by pressing it down. So I'm going to rub it out, just kind of smush it over that line until finally it's gone. And now I want to press it flat again. So you might just go freestyle here where you just have at it. And I do encourage you to do some of that. But also do some that you maybe draw out first. Like, what are some things I might want to do? And then just go ahead and just draw, 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 and then actually do some of those. So, but I said, if you just want to do it freestyle where you don't really know what you're going to do, just like using your tools, like what would happen if I took it and I just kind of pressed it in and I made kind of a groove like that. I'm like, okay, it's in there. It's not very deep in there though. Okay, and I do that. It's like, it's all right, but it's a little sloppy. So. Just because you put a line in there doesn't mean it's keepable. You might look at it and go, yuck, that's terrible. I'm like, that's all right. I don't mind that now. And then I'm going to see what, what can happen again. I'm going to do like a, a plus kind of a thing. And because I don't know what I'm doing, I'm going to respond to it after I get it in there and go, okay, so I have that. Now what else do I want? And this might be where I, I do some things where I say, well, actually, I'm going to put this back in here. And I'm going to do some variety of just messing with my fingers and just see what happens. And I might get a total disaster. I say, that was terrible. I didn't like that one bit. Or I might do it and it turns out really cool. So I'm gonna give this a shot. I've never done this before. It's like, it's really curved on the ends, which might be really cool. So I like that one and it has enough to hang on to here. So that's fine. That one could be done. Now, again, just cause you finish it doesn't mean you're done. Take a careful look over things. I'm looking, the lines are a little bit sloppy. A little bit sloppy. So I'm gonna neaten them up a little bit. Take time, like you're a jeweler, looking closely to look for any flaws in the stone. Look for those little things that you're like, eh, I could fix that. It's really easy to fix at this stage. Okay, I'm happy with that one. And so try some more. Again, get a little piece of clay. You want to get it flat on the end. Let me show you the one that, one of my favorite ones about the cactus. The one about that one that I really liked is that it makes it stick out. And so the secret is it's always going to be the opposite. So if I want the cactus to stick out, I need to carve it in. It doesn't stick out. It's the opposite. So if I said, oh, okay, I'm going to do cactus. Great. Well, let me do something that's not a cactus. I'll do something different. So I get my flat surface. I don't like the shape. So I'm just going to roll it out a bit more. I'm going to go ahead and just like roll it. Just maybe I want to more, more circular so I could do this. Um, if you had like a really clean knife like we have a, a knife that we use in the art room called a fettling knife and it's like an almost sharp knife it does it's not serrated at all it doesn't have like little grooves on it the ones you have in your kit it's sturdy and durable but it has serrated which is good for some things but when you're trying to cut a nice smooth line it's just going to leave a lot of extra stuff so if i take this and i cut with it it's going to leave those lines which sometimes you might want but if i do this we'll see what happens if I say I want to cut some off, okay, it actually worked pretty good. It didn't smush it a little bit at the end, but if I'm like, okay, that's, that's fine. I can work with that. What you're going to find with a lot of these things is you are going to learn what the clay can do just like your ancestors thousands of years ago were doing. You had some clay in your hand. Someone taught you some things, but you also experimented. You played around and like, what would happen if I did this? What would happen if I did that? And you're just trying out a variety of different things. So I now have a flat surface. I'm gonna go with a round, like pretty much a circle. And if you want it perfect, then keep shooting for, for perfection. And then something I can grab onto. And so what I'm gonna do now is use a pencil, or in this case, I'm gonna use the tool. It has a little bobby pin on the end, which would be really handy later on. And I'm just gonna draw whatever design I want in there. So if I wanna do some sort of a design that's, oh, let's say, kind of going off the cuff here, I'm just kind of drawing it in. now. The deeper that you put it in there, the more it sticks up. Now, I'm going to test out this tool real quick here. I'm just going to like put that tool in, and I'm going to see if I can kind of spin it around. And what it's doing is it's kind of like cutting out more of it. Now, it's super sloppy. Now, the clays we're working with, it, we're going to talk more about 
the different stages of clay and we're going to talk about leather hard on friday we're really going to push um that but what you're going to find is if you're working with the clay and it just keeps leaving lots of extra debris you try to carve in and it's just doing like all sorts of like hey there's all this extra junk that's there i don't want that that can be fixed a lot of times by waiting um waiting a little while until the clay is drier to a stage called leather hard. So right now, because I'm at the experimenting stage, I'm going to do it so I can realize how frustrating that really could be if I was doing this and like, oh, that's so annoying. All these little bits keep coming off. And when I go to try to fix them, it kind of ruins it. And it's okay as you're working to say, this is kind of frustrating to work with sometimes. It's good to realize that because I can remember being really young and not liking clay that much. I like the idea of it, but then I started working with it. I'm like, ah, oh, this is so frustrating. It just keeps messing up. When I try to fix it, I make it worse. And that's going to come into the importance of stages of clay. So I'm going to say, you know what? I'm not getting very far with this. I'm going to come back to this in a little while when it's a little drier. I might try doing some things right now, like I said, I'm doing kind of like a flower. I might try it. I'm kind of pressing instead of um, drawing. So I'm like trying and I'm just using the point of it. I didn't know that that would work well. I just kind of like took a chance. So I do like it. It's coming along all right. I can see I am going to want to come back to this and fix it up because it is a bit on the sloppy side. I don't leave a lot of extra of that junk in there because I want it to be a clean stamp. So I go ahead and I make my thing. But at some point, I'm going to say, all right, I need to set it aside until it's leather hard. Again, we will cover that a lot more in our next thing on Friday. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to experiment with some different things you can do where you can draw in designs. And so the ones I drew in, uh, you know, the peace sign, different designs, like these are all, all ones that you draw in. I'm not gonna go and show you me drawing in a whole bunch of stuff. I think you get it. But the idea is I'm not worried about really doing a, an amazing job with the end here. Now, if someone wanted to, if they said, ooh, I really like how the end looked on it, but I really hate the stamp itself, and that really bothers me, someone could, shape this later or they could even cut off part of it and attach it to a nicer piece later that is a possibility like i could say i like this i don't like this i'm gonna maybe come back to it when it's a little bit drier but i'm gonna go and maybe i take off part that i like so i'm gonna say i'm gonna take this off now caution i could mess this all up in the process so you do not have to do this like i say i want to keep that but i want to put it on something that's nicer and maybe i make that separately and I got some of my things here. So I have this little, uh, let's put this stuff in here. Okay, so what I have here is some little stamps I made where I made the, the handle of it a lot cooler. I'll, I'll do one of these in front of you, but it's like I could take that and what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna, want, gonna wanna score whatever pieces, okay, this is something we're gonna go over a lot, but real quickly, I'm gonna score, which is using lots of little grooves. I should get on camera here. All right, so it's just taking your grooves. You can do it with a knife, pencil, uh, the dowel, comb, anything that you're, you're putting a lot of grooves, that's called scoring. And then I need to get, hey, remember making slip? Let's see how that is. Let's see if this stuff, oh yeah, it's good. It's, it's, it's smushy, gushy stuff. And so I got this, and so what I need to do is put that on top of that scoring, take that, I like that end, be ready to put that on, except, wait, wait, wait. I always score anything that you're attaching together. And that when we go into some of these little details, I'll explain a little bit of the why. Just for now, trust me, you want to make sure that you have slip on both things. And you put the scoring lines in there, and then you cover them up. And you let that slip just get inside those grooves, and I can stick it on there. So if I really wanted a much cooler looking stamp, and that is one way I do it. Again, not required for all of yours that's just if you say i really want to because you're having fun with it and you want to see what you can do and so now you have that option um so if we have other things you might have some things that you want to do a little bit differently so i had like the triangle one i also had the one that was uh the lightning bolt it's the big one and so with these ones you could do the same thing i could carve away with some different tools like take away some things so that it reveals the thing i'm trying to do so if i was doing something like the lightning bolt and if i had like a flat piece of clay and I was taking that flat piece and I was trying out maybe I'll try this little tool here and I could try like pressing it and see what happens and I might get what I was hoping for you also might not you might say that's not doing what I wished it would do but it doesn't hurt to try sometimes you accidentally come across an idea like oh that doesn't do what I want to but 
I see what it's doing and what if I did, and then you kind of go from there. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do where we actually put something on here. So for this, I'm gonna need to flatten out some clay. And so I don't need a lot of it because I just need a little thin piece. I could take a chance and do it on the board. I can tell you I've been working with this clay a couple of times. I've been smushing it back into a ball again and using it, smushing it into a ball again and using it. Every time I do that, it's getting drier and drier and drier. So even if I press this pretty hard on here, it's probably still gonna come off pretty well because a lot of the water is leaving, which it's good to know because the longer I let that go, the harder it is to work with. So let me just roll a little flat piece here that you can see. Um, no paper, but it is mostly coming off and also I'm taking it off every once in a while. So if this was ripping on me, I would go, yeah, I guess I was being too reckless. I should put something underneath it. All right, so now I can draw out what it is I wanted. So that's when I did my lightning bolt. So whatever it is that I was doing, like let's say I'm gonna make a little person or something like that. I wanna probably draw it bigger than then I want, because I can always shrink it. It's hard to make it bigger. So if I'm making like a little person, uh, and who knows why I do the things I do when I'm doing examples, but just things that pop in my head and I run with it. Now let's see what happens, because I didn't put any paper under it. Well, I can peel away all the extra stuff. There's my little person. Hey, that's kind of fun in itself. Someone's thinking to themselves, I'm going to make a thousand people and plant them around my house and confuse my family. So I could work with this person, just using my fingers as a good tool, just skin until it looks like how I want it, and then eventually stick that on the end of that, again, score the back. You weren't aware of like how you do that, just as long as you're getting some grooves somewhere. So sometimes this isn't the best tool you might end up using because it's such a small thing. I might use the little pencil tool, the little dowel that's sharpened. And I just think of it, it's like I'm putting lines all over its body, uh, just everywhere I can. So you get the slip on both things. Now you may not want to gob it on there because it's a very small thing and a lot of it might just kind of squish out and I lose my details. So let's say I did a great job making this little person and did a good job scoring it. And then I took the, the flat surface that I'm sticking it to and I'm gonna get some slip on that and then I can put them together. So that's another way to make uh, a stamp is by making two separate things and joining, joining them together, which then some people will realize, well, could I kind of continue that process adding more stuff on here? Absolutely you could. All of a sudden I could have, make a tiny little necktie and stick that on there. And so you can just kind of go with this and like one thing can lead you to another until you try it and you go, oh great, that's fun. Or that didn't work out, but hey, didn't hurt anything to try. So the idea here is anytime you put clay together though, if I don't put slip on it, it's going to come apart. Quick little visual about slip. If I take two dry pieces of paper and I put them together, they will absolutely fall apart. Now I added water to the paper towels, take the two wet paper towels, put them together, and I only hang on to one of them and it stays together. But what happens if we wait a while? That's probably good. All right, now that I waited like three hours, now I take my paper towels, which used to be wet, and uh, they come right apart. So what I found out is if I take clay, which has water in it, and I put it with another piece of clay that has water in it, it's going to appear like they are together. Let this dry. You want me to get the clock out and do that again? No. Assume that I'm telling the truth. They will fall right apart because the water that's in there is holding it together. Now, if I really wanted these to stick together, I might use something like glue, put some glue on there, stick it on, let it dry, and it'll stay together. Same idea, your slip is gonna act like that glue, where I take one plus one, have the glue in between, stick them together, makes it stronger. All right, so one more thing about time. I mentioned the flower one that I need to come back to. It depends on the humidity in your room, it depends on if there's a breeze going through, the heat that's, go that's going on and all that. During the winter time when we have heat on, the air is drier and things dry out a lot faster. So during the summer and spring and early fall, since there's more humidity, things dry slower. So you'll just have to see how things react in your home. But I'm going to check this later on and see if when I touch it, it's like really making it worse or if I'm able to go along and smooth things out. I can use my finger when that works. I can use different tools when I want to get in sharper areas. And you can also use like pencils if you wanted, but then you can clay all over it. But you know, basically I just want to come back to it when it's not 
so soft and so check it at some point. I can't tell you exactly how long besides those factors of your room that it's going to have different qualities. You also have how thick the clay is. If the clay is really thick, it takes a lot longer to dry up. So that's all for that. So what I want you to do is I want you to try to make four stamps. One of them is going to be, we'll say, nicer as the handle goes. Something that involves maybe some sort of design that goes around it. Um, you can do that by rolling. Like if you're making it a something, you kind of rolled it around and made lines that went around. You could try by drawing different designs on here. Now with clay, when you draw it, um, this is leather hard. It's It's been drying for a little bit. So when I put it on there and I rub away the extra stuff, it's not totally ruining it like it was the other time. I'm going to go over it again and it's looking a little bit better and I maybe I'll go over it one more time. And so the longer I wait on drying, um, the more chance I'll be able to, to rub it away without damaging it. So your goal is to make four stamps with one of them having, we'll say a fancy handle, a handle that has a lot more decoration to it. You can add stuff to the outside. I could add stuff with clay. Maybe I make like a little clay ball or sphere and I smoosh that down so it's a hemisphere. And maybe I score and slip and I'm going to have like little little dots that go along. I don't know. It's really, think of it as a little sculpture. So one of them we'll say is the fancier handle. The other ones can be if you want, or they could be just really the crude, just kind of like it's just something I can grab onto and that's fine. But in the end, you want to have a four stamps that have a variety of different designs. So that's your assignment for now. So get that, and then when they're all done, just set them aside, and we're going to let them actually dry out. So when you're done, put them somewhere they can start to dry. Don't put them in a bag anymore. All right, good luck with this. All right, a quick update. Since I ended the video, I let things sit out for a while, and it is getting to what they call leather hard. It has a leathery feel. It's not soft and squishy anymore, and whew, it's very cold. I, I, the clay gets really cold at this stage. Um, and so I know that it's had a great stage for working and cleaning things up. And so now that it is leather hard, it's a good time for me to go back to the, the things and work on them, whether I use some of the tools here or something else. Uh, it should be a lot easier to work with because it's soft enough to do some different things, but it's also not squishy. And so there is going to be that sweet spot of leather hard that you're trying to find when it comes to all the design work that you're doing. When you're first building with your clay and you're creating forms, you usually want it softer, but you get to certain things and you want to have it get to this stage. And if I let it get too dry, of course, it'll be too hard to do that. And we'll talk about that as we come along too. So if you're having trouble with it, leave it. Come back to it. Just let it sit out and dry for a little while. Don't let it dry completely. It's still gray. It's still dark and still wet, but it's, you know, it's not... I can maybe pull it apart. It's not bending very much and starting to crack. So it's pretty getting firm, but at the same time, it is a little bit soft still. And again, that feel, I can feel with my hands when I put on my cheek, it's very cold. And so that is leather hard clay.